our market did not crash. It did not crash after next to no immigration, no foreign students, no tourism. If that didn't affect our real estate market, next to nothing will. You're watching the Hirsch Condos Digital Experience. Hi everyone, welcome to episode 31 of the Hirsch Condos Digital Experience. I'm your host today, Mitch Parker, and sitting beside me is Costas Cavellos, who has many, many titles. So I am gonna pass it to you to tell everybody exactly what you do. Well, it depends on who you ask, but <laughs> when people ask me what I do, I'm the founder of First Access Condos. I've been selling real estate for over a decade and I've been focusing exclusively on our pre-construction industry for the past five years. I'm a fellow investor, as many of you are that are watching. I truly believe in putting my money where my mouth is and I believe in our industry. And I'm also considered a mentor to over 5,000 fellow realtors at my brokerage. That's amazing. So it's fair to say you have a pretty good grasp of what's going on in the market. It's good to say that I got boots on the ground. Definitely. <laughs> For sure. And that's exactly what we're going to get into today. Um, I know it's really easy to look in the media and see all the headlines and possibly get, get caught up into all the, um, whether it's negative media right now going on with COVID or, uh, you know, positive media when the market's going in the other direction. But I think as an investor, it's all about um, staying logical, looking at the facts, um, and keeping a calm head when it comes to buying, especially real estate. Would, would you agree with that? 100%. And the key to any investment, whether it's real estate or anything else, is you want to be ahead of the herd. You don't want to be in the middle or behind it. And anytime you let hysteria and um, just what everybody is doing at the time, if you're, in, if you're following a trend, it's not the way to invest. And you're never going to make a maximize your investment return when you're part of a trend. It's either you're before it or you wait for it to ride out and then you do something. And that's what's happening today. And unfortunately, ever since we started our last real estate boom, um, the number one talk in Toronto for years has been real estate. And for every person that would say something positive about it, there'd be two or three people that would say something negative. And unfortunately for them, those were the people that were on the sidelines and waiting for the market to crash. And those people that didn't buy a house when it was $500,000 definitely won't buy one now when it's a million. And the same holds true for all aspects of real estate. So that's actually a perfect segue into the next thing that I want to discuss, which is an article came out on uh, Better Dwelling. And the headline read something like, if you bought a condo in May, you have the equivalence of four boxes of Oreos worth of equity. And so their basis was, if you put 5% down in May um, and purchased a condo, we've seen price, uh, negative price growth. Um, and so at this point, you would have about $20 worth of equity in that. Now, what would you say to a potential investor or buyer who came to you with an article like that? How would you respond? So what we're seeing now is we're seeing a temporary dip in Toronto condo market. The real sell market of houses, detached towns, they've increased and especially in the suburbs. But I believe what we're seeing in the core, which is the focus of condos in the city, um, is a temporary drop in prices and rental rates. And the reason for that is threefold. First, we have no tourism. And when we have no tourism, the first domino to fall is the Airbnb market. When the Airbnbs are being rented out, the owners panic and they flood the market with rental and sales. So anytime you flood the market, the market temporarily drops. Hence the drop in rental rates, hence actually a very slight drop in resale rates for condos because the prices haven't actually dropped or the rental rates may have dropped between 10 and 15 percent depending on the location and prices are actually up i was reading that uh the other day 6.15 percent year over year for condos and and that's what i read too i read year over year it was it was six points uh six point one percent and uh if you're looking at from March onward, they have actually flatlined. Yes. So nobody's really lost money, unless for that person that decided to buy a condo and sell it since May, because mm -hmm. he has money <laughs> to burn. But the second factor affecting this is we have no foreign students. We are a foreign student hub. People from all over the world come to enjoy our fantastic universities and inject a lot of money into the Toronto market. These people are not here. Thousands and thousands of potential renters are absent. 
That's a second prong on the trident that's affecting us right now. The third one is we've had the lowest immigration in recent memory this year. And to counteract this, the Trudeau government, and I'm not a fan of the Liberal Party, and I think the way they've handled this has been dreadful, but a good thing about them is they've decided to allow 400,000 people a year nationally to come to, the, to our shores as opposed to 300. So any loss accrued this year will be made up for. Now, 400,000 people a year over the course of three years is 1.2 million. 60% of them will come through the economic program. So out of 400,000 a year, 60% is 240,000. That's 240,000 people a year with money, hard cash that they're gonna invest into our country. From my understanding, depending on what you bring, how much, you can pick and choose where you're going. The vast majority of them will say 50% will come to Toronto. That's 120,000. Now we had numbers of 2018, which was the last stat that I could pull up, okay? In 2018, we had 97,000 come to Toronto proper and 137,000 come to the GTA. We were first in North America as a city and second by 1,000, so I'll say we were first there too, only to Dallas-Fort Worth with 137,000. I forecasted back on April 3rd when I gave my first State of the Condo Nation seminar and I spoke about the effects of COVID in our real estate market, I predicted that our immigration numbers would double in the first full year of immigration and we're on track to do that. Now what's going to happen next year when we have tourism again, thousands and thousands of foreign students and double the immigration numbers? a massive jump in rental rates and real estate prices. Because remember, our market is not based on speculation, it's based on founded, hardcore economic fundamentals, supply and demand. I think that ties into something very important, which is um, not timing the market, right? As a real estate investor, one of the golden rules is don't time the market, spend time in the market. So even if you were one of those condo buyers that bought in May, I mean, as long as you don't have to sell, you're going to make your money back. I mean, the market's going to come back. You just said all those things. Toronto is seen as an incredible place to put your money. I mean, we were chatting before and you had brought up like the Canadian dream is almost like the new American dream, right? It truly is the Canadian dream. It's just being labeled the American dream. Right. And so, um, you know, when you talk about the immigrants that, that come here, they're generally, they're hardworking. They want to build success in this country. Even, you know, some of them that come with money are, are great, but there's a lot that come here just looking looking for opportunity and they're the ones who who are working hard and, and contributing to the economy and these are the type of people you want to bring in who ultimately drive real estate prices up because your economy is on such a roll. 100% and the foundation of our economic success and the greatness of the Canadian economic machine was based on immigration and the vast majority of the people come here come here for a better life to create a better life for themselves and family and now we're going to have 240,000 people a year that have that goal but also have a lot of money to invest and as for timing the market you know you can't really let the market control you but what you can do is you can be patient. And now that all the, the martial arts schools were closed, I've been training my six-year-olds a lot, so I'm getting back in touch with all that. And I like to quote the immortal Bruce Lee. And Bruce said Bruce Lee was famous for his quote, be like water. And you have to be like water in anything you do. You have to adapt to situations. And when you feel something push you, you go back. When it's, some, when it's time to push, you push. And that's what you do in the market. The key to real estate investing in a nutshell is when the market drops, you buy and hold. When the market goes up, then that's the opportunity to sell. And right now is not really the time to sell your condo if you don't need to. Mm -hmm. But even if you do, you've bought it minimum a year ago and you're still gonna make money. So this is still the number one investment in town. And we have sold more condos in Toronto, the greater Toronto area, than any other city on the planet for the past two years. We have more cranes in the sky, construction cranes, than we're number one cranes in the sky in North America, and we have more cranes in the sky than numbers two to nine combined. Amazing. We are the construction, real estate construction powerhouse of the planet, and that's why people from all over the world want to come here. The number one fundamental to, the Toronto economic, to Toronto's economic greatness is we are, are the new tech capital of North America. We are 
if not the banking capital now, we're getting up there to tie in Manhattan, and we are a real estate powerhouse. So if you're looking at it from, uh, let's say, a pre-construction condo phase, right? You're buying now uh, knowing that your building is going to be ready in, call it, two to four years. Where in the GTA are you looking and where are you really seeing these opportunities? Prices were getting, or they're getting up there. I think you can't say something is expensive because expensive is relative to value and value to me is different from value to you. But I think there is no real bad purchases in Toronto if you buy at the pre-construction phase. Statistically, now that we have, we can compare, if you bought a condo in Toronto in 2016, uh, your 20% down payment by the time you got the keys in 2020 had increased close to 300% on average. And that's, a, that's, that's gross, not net, but still, that's a substantial return. It's, um, it's a return that you can't beat in almost in no other investment on the planet. We are the number one investment for that reason. So there is no really bad area to buy. There's a bad time to buy, and that's to buy last. But if you buy first in any pre-construction project, and we continue on this path of immigration, borders opening, students coming back, um, tech companies, uh, sowing roots here and uh, putting their foundation down, you will do well. And whether you buy in the suburbs or in the core, you're gonna do well. I'm a big fan of buying in the core and following transit, but now with the expansions of what Metrolinx is doing and with the Go extension, okay, with Go stations and so forth, you can buy in the suburbs as well. So it's not really where's the best place to buy, it's the best time to buy. And I like to quote what Benjamin Tal used to say, if you think it's expensive now, wait till later. And that's the truth. We are in a golden opportunity to purchase real estate right now in Toronto, especially pre-construction. There is fantastic deposit extensions and incentives put forth, negotiated by developers with their financiers that allows a lot of people to buy for 5% down per year. Don't squander this opportunity. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, there's someone here uh, in the office, one of our partners who, who he has a quote and I, and I love it. And he goes, you know, real estate is always expensive when you're buying it and cheap when you look back a number of years later on it. And that is, that is the gospel truth of real estate, especially in the Toronto market. Everyone that buys something thinks it's expensive. Right. And then when they sell it and they make money on it, whether they want to admit it or not, they're smiling inside saying, I made a great buy. And that's what we've seen. So remember everybody, if you take one thing home from what Mitch and I have talked about today, remember this, our market did not crash. It did not crash after next to no immigration, no foreign students, no tourism. If that didn't affect our real estate market, next to nothing will. With that, Costas, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate all the insight. It's been amazing. You are like a stat machine. Uh, if you guys need more information or want to get in touch with Costas, what's the best way to reach you? Info at firstaccesscondos.com or I'm a little old-fashioned. I'm older than I look. 416-662-5701. Amazing. Until next time, this has been episode 31 of the Hirsch Condos Digital Experience. Have a successful day. Thanks for watching the Hirsch Condos Digital Experience. Stay tuned for more exciting content. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms.